today's webinar. As you can see, I'm not in Cologne. Uh, I'm not in my home office. Actually, I'm in Düsseldorf at the Vioso company. And our dear host, Emanuel Züger, CEO of the Vioso co company, uh, he is uh, actually uh, yeah, our host for this today's session. Thank and you. this session, uh, yeah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Düsseldorf. Oh, you can say welcome to me yeah. because you're the host, right? Absolutely. Welcome to Düsseldorf, which is always a bit picky, but uh, we don't have an issue with that. Yeah. Welcome uh, cool. to you also for this day's webinar. Yeah. So today, uh, as you can see, this is about Vioso integration in how to get Vioso auto uh, camera-based auto calibration into Pandora's box. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll find out uh, how this works uh, with the help of Emmanuel. And uh, I will show you the Panoras box workflow after the calibration thing. And yeah, let's quickly go through the today's contents. Oh, by the way, sorry for the delay. So we had some little issues. Maybe you know that if you go in a show and there is a graphics card which makes some clouds and things like that. So sorry for the little delay. Um, we quickly switched to a different system. So we had to readjust some few things, sorry for the delay. Okay, today we go through um, the uh, auto alignment. Uh, let me try to uh, update this PowerPoint. Uh, there you can see it. Uh, so, uh, first thing is the Vioso auto alignment presented by Emmanuel Züger. Uh, where to use it? which editions do we have, what cameras to use, and a demo of the dome. Maybe you can see it already a little bit. We will show it more uh, with, the, with this webinar, of course. And after that, we export the files into Panoras Box, and I will show you how they have to be handled there uh, and give you a few hints what you have to do to make it um, work in Panoras Box. And of course, we show a little bit of playback, but that's not a big point. And at the end, we do a little question and answer. So you can put in your questions, as you know it already, uh, in the questions uh, tool from GoToWebinar. We will go through questions after we present it. So feel free to, uh, to, um, to write whenever you want, but we will go through the questions after our presentation. Yeah, so that's for today. Uh, welcome, and you have the word, Emmanuel. I give you a little space here uh, so you can show everything around. Thank you very much, Thomas, for this introduction, and thank you for making this webinar possible. So, um, we also auto calibration might be known to some people. It's a camera by system to set up multiple projectors. So, auto calibration is used um, to make complex projection scenarios. Um, easier handle to handle and faster to set up. And today showed how important that is because we set up the system in just five minutes again um, due to a delay. So Vioso is available in two versions. The product we call is Vioso Integrate because the purpose is to integrate in third-party tools like Pandora's Box. Um, Integrate and Integrate Plus are a little different. So Integrate is the standard version, um, less costly, less the plus. And it's, first of all, done for every kind, uh, capable for every kind of surfaces. So uh, we do not differ in, let's say, plus can only make domes and standard can only make uh, flat screens. All flat, curved dome screens and also arbitrary screens, let's say a rock face, a facade, can be calibrated. And we call that a flattening because the Integrate Plus works on a 3D model. So this is the 3D mapping that you all know, where a 3D model and UV mapped content needs to be fit together. So that's the main difference. The number of projectors and the number of servers are theoretically unlimited. So our calibration system is able to scale with the hardware setup that you have. And um, the second big difference then are the number of cameras. A single camera, is what Integrate does, and multiple cameras, which is a way more complex workflow, is a part of you know, so Integrate Plus. Therefore, um, today a dome is a single camera, uh, so even very complex setups are possible even with a standard version. 
the camera is a big part of the setup. So in many, many cases, we provide the cameras as part of, of our service. But you can start with webcams. Not nearly every camera is workable that you can edit a little bit. So there's not much you need to do with the camera, but make sure that it's simply providing an image and not doing any funny stuff like filters or auto, align, uh, auto exposures and stuff. So in enclosed environments, a webcam does already a good job. But when you go to larger setups, fixed setups with fixed installed cameras, there's a selection of cameras that we provide. Multipurpose is a camera with a zoomable lens. So you can install it in several places. It's good as a, as a multipurpose weapon in your pocket. A wide angle lens, very wide angle, 183, uh, 138 degree, can capture the widest panoramas. It's, it's in fact nearly like a fisheye lens. Um, has a heavy distortion that you need to cope with, but there are tools to do so. Especially for multi-camera setups, where the lens and the distortion-free uh, lens is important. We have a so-called VR and SIM camera kit. And if you do a dome like today or um, other setups like panoramic displays, fisheye lenses do a great job. So we have a very powerful fisheye sensor. Well, and that's what we provide. But if you have cameras in your stock, including TV cameras or other computer vision cameras, they can be used as long as you know how to operate and as long as these cameras are recognized by Windows. So today we have a very interesting setup. We have 12 projectors. Maybe you can see already the projectors um, and into why we show that. So we have 12 projectors which are connected to two Pandora's box servers. One is a quad server and one is an Octo server. We have a Pandora's box manager, a dedicated device, and um, everything is, yes, there it is, beauty. And everything is connected via network, nothing new for you. So that very well-known setup is now um, extended with a Vioso calibration device. It's another computer in this case, so you can go with your laptop on site and do the calibration from there. But the Vioso software can also run on the Pandora's Box Manager. So it's just um, to show how um, minimal invasive the system can be set up. And last but not least, we have one camera that is also a network camera. So um, as I said, these kind of camera devices um, uh, powered by network and therefore um, are easily to integrate. So it's just for you to see that. That's the cameras we talk about, very little, very small. Um, actually, this is the camera that we're using here right now, and this holds in my hand. So um, that's the setup we talk about. And now I like to invite you to, the, um, to visit the um, Pandora's Box Manager to see how, how that is set up. With setup, I mean um, the setup of um, Pandora's Box Manager. So um, that's now the surface of the Pandora's Box Manager, and we need to deal with the clients. Remember, we have our own dedicated calibration um, computer, so there's no need for us to work on the Pandora's Box Manager, but on the clients. The remote tools. Uh, come in place to connect. So I will show you on the quad server um, how that looks like. Uh, just to quickly exit um, the need to exit the full screen to show you that. Um, we go. So uh, this uh, X. Uh, now you're in full screen. The I think it's your calibrations to run in. Full screen. Oh, oh, that's me. Oh, you're right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Okay. There we go. Ah, well, thank you so much. So, um, in fact, this is how it looks like, but I want you to start from scratch. So, all you need to do to have a Pandora's box server able to take part in our calibration network is to either install, we also integrate, or simply copy the binaries somewhere on the server. So in fact, there's no install required. So all you need to do is to, to launch the executable. It's called SP Integrate 64 Excel. 
uh, don't mind, we have a, a tutorial that shows how that works. And once you launch it, it shows up. Sometimes it's hidden, it's something that I learned uh, when setting that up. So um, the calibration software is already running. Um, it's already running, but sometimes it's hidden. So in that case, uh, simply need to, just to turn off the camera, where are you? There we go. Um, just turn off the um, taskbar and when it comes back. Um, uh, remember, this is only done, this is only required when we set it up initially. So usually you simply launch the calibration executable and that's it. There are only a very few configurations you must do. Um, so this is the client listening and the client must be configured to listen to the network. So there are the settings and in the settings, there's a multi-client node. And here it must be enabled and the adapter must be selected in case with multiple adapters, you need to select the adapter with the IP that is part of the calibration network. Usually it's the same network that uh, Pandora's Box Manager also runs to. And um, in case um, you install the software, it will ask for a demo. And simply in this case, that the node maintenance has the checkbox use pure display client license. It sounds a bit weird, but it's nothing else but saying, uh, I'm running with a zero display license, so I'm running without a valid license because all the licensing is handled centralized on a virtual calibration PC, not on a client. So there's no need to add any additional dongle or do any additional um, activation. So that's just, that's just fine to bypass. Um, very important is to set the screen split in case we have a mosaic setup. So in in this setup we have um, uh, so in this setup we have a mosaic. So Pandora's box works well with mosaic, and that is something that needs to be set in the calibration software as well. So in this case there is a one by four mosaic combining all the um, outputs to a single screen. So we set in the calibration software screen split, which is just one display available. And here we split also one by four so that the calibration software provides uh, access to each projector individually. That's it. That's all we need to do in configuration. The same configuration has been done on the Octo. And now the calibration can run in the background, can be minimized, can be put in auto start in case you do that as a fixed installation with recalibration features. So um, this way you can see that the integration itself on the clients is at minimal invasive as we call it. So now it's time to go back to the desktop of the calibration PC. Um, so on a calibration PC, we have the, um, um, I see the calibration PC is not visible. Okay, just give me a moment. Um, I have an idea why it's not working. No, it doesn't matter. Just give me a moment. So. So, ah, it's, was just the, <laughs> that happens if you do something a bit in a rush. Um, okay, so let's go to uh, to the calibration uh, master, if you want to call it that way. So in fact, we do not have a dedicated master or client application, it's always the same application. And the, cali the application where you simply start the calibration is the one that acts as a master. Um, to get information which Pandora's box clients are available, with a tool that is called the Abstract Display Calibrator. Um, you need to run this tool prior to running um, the calibrator. And, and this tool collects the connected devices, so the connected Pandora's box servers, and the configuration about the mosaic. So we enter pbquad for the uh, quad server, which has an IP 168.1, and this is the 21. Click on add and we can see, ah, okay, it's already providing four displays. That's the split that we have set and that matches to the Mosaic configuration. We repeat for the Pandora's box 
Octo server, which has the IP 168, 1 and 22, add. And now we get another eight displays, which matches to the configuration of the mosaic there as well. And by setting apply, we get the configuration saved for the next startup of our calibration. So again, this is done usually only once. You can, you do not need to do that at every calibration. So once we start up, we see already four displays on quad, eight displays on octo, and can simply continue with the calibration. The calibrations are pretty straightforward process, and there are plenty of tutorials showing each aspect of the calibration. So today uh, we use a dome as a very remarkable example, um, but I'm getting a bit quickly over the calibration because that uh, is a topic for dedicated webinars, um, and uh, we will provide the resources later. So you select the projectors to calibrate, and um, yeah, first step is to select the projectors to calibrate, which kind of screen, curved screen or dome, and the camera. So this is the fisheye camera. Provide a name for this calibration, which is a bit important because this name will uh, take a role when you export to Pandora's box. The arrangement of the projectors, in this case, it's not a strip or grid, it's something else. So we call it grid and arbitrary. We do a new scan and the calibration should begin. So we see now the camera and the camera image. Um, I'm going to configure the camera in a, in a way that it makes most use for this kind of setup. So our calibration cameras, they're very flexible in terms of how to handle a sensor, how to handle cropping, region of interest, how to handle um, speed and exposure times. So all that, that is very, uh, comes very handy if you need to adapt to local situations because uh, the system not only works in lab conditions, it works in also on show conditions, live conditions, conditions that you have not planned. So that's where auto calibration really needs to prove that it is working. Um, the scanning procedure is nearly fully automated. So it goes through a short sequence where you as an operator have the chance to review. So let's say the brightness, you can adjust. Um, in, in fact, um, we want to see dots. So um, we have an inspector, as we call it, that shows if the scan is working properly. So if the dots are green, um, you can proceed. If the dots have some issues, then probably there's noise. So um, again, this is something that we are going to cover in a, in a very deeply um, a tutorial. And of course, our help desk shows that. So for today, um, you see that's how the scan works, which is now taking over the um, Pandora's Box clients. So what we see right now is actually executed by Pandora's Box clients. They are connected to the projectors, not our calibrator. So that was projector one. We have a um, preview on the dome so we can see that it's um, probably okay. It's part of the total content. And now this uh, continues to the next projector. which again goes through the sequence of white pattern. Let's see the dots. Let me have a look at the threshold. That well, looks good. These are difficult conditions for the camera because we have a lot of light here by the, um, to have a good uh, view by the TV camera. Um, but even in that condition, which are usually not live conditions, um, it works quite well. So um, that can change, of course, if you have sunlight, flashing LEDs and what happens, um, what could happen in real life conditions. Yeah, looks good. So, well, I think you got the idea how the calibration works. Let's, let's go on and see the next projector. So, here again, noise works well, dots look good, and we are good to go, third projector. The speed of the scan depends on variable, uh, various parameters, the networks, sensor speed. So that can change, um, but is usually not a, a big thing. So it's usually less than 10 seconds per projector. 
um, the pure scanning speed. So you can assume that setting up a projected display is really going pretty, pretty fast. So after the scan, we see now already the result. So this is the alignment that you can see. And after the scan, and I can work on this alignment in real time and modify it. So let's say to match with the, in this case, with the shape of the dome. So since we don't know the dome where it is, so there are no markers or something attached, we simply match this manually, which is quite an easy job to do for an operator um, since um, we do not handle each projector individually, but simply editing the whole result of it. At least now you will have noticed that I just calibrated three projectors. So I, I used now, I built uh, for shortcuts, not to go through all 12 projectors that would make this webinar a bit long. So at this moment, um, you got the idea. It's exactly the same thing with nine projectors in addition. You can see that the operation works already in real time using the Pandora's boxes to output. So there's, it's really as simple as is it. And um, me sitting on a laptop doing the calibration and then letting Pandora's box do all the other work is, I think, exactly the workflow that most operators uh, would like also to do on site. Maybe even not using a separate laptop, but a Pandora's box manager. So once this is done, um, we are back and I'm going to um, simply to load my previous file um, as I just canceled the calibration. I said this is now today not the topic to go to the very end. But if you've done it, we have one additional, uh, we have one additional, um, we call it display, a so-called compound display. That's the dome which resembles the calibrated result. When we, we use that result in our calibration tool also to color match, to fine tune them, their warping, to tune individual projectors and stuff. Um, but when we are done, all we need to do is to export. So the interface to Pandora's box is a file export of our calibration into a calibration format that Pandora's box can understand. For doing so, we need to have access to the Pandora's box manager. If this is running on the same PC, it's easy. Then you simply choose a file folder and you're done. In that case, um, uh, we set up an access to the Pandora's box manager on, on network level. So uh, this is a shared drive. So that points to the IP of the Pandora's box manager. Here it looks in this, uh, it points into a specific folder that is part of the Pandora's box configuration. And we are going to write the um, files into the folder assets user calibration and Thomas will show you more in detail how that works. So all you need to know is after you've set up the access to Pandora's box manager, the location where to save and then file export mapping. We select the dome, not each projector individually, but the compound display that resembles our calibration. The export format is direct XX file mesh. That is something you simply need to know. Um, it's not called Kulux Pandora's box format because it's a generic format that also is used for other applications. It is important to have the checkbox keep splits checked because that will provide a single file per projector. You can always read that in our tutorial and so you don't need to take notes or something or always remember at which time in the video it's explained. So there is smash file and keep splits. These are the settings that you as an operator need to do when working with Pandora's box. The file name is something it will, the files will have this such a name. So in doing export, you can decide to make export one, export two, or let's say try one, try two, simply by renaming the file. And here's the export path that you simply select from the desktop as you are used to, to work with. And that's it. As soon as you click export, the files are now generated. And uh, in this case, as said before, it's a bunch of files. It's not a single export file, but several export files. And it's uh, exactly one so-called X file that is a mesh, ge the geometry, how to map a projector, and a bitmap that contains the blending and color matching information.
So once the export is done, the job of the calibrator is done. It's not time to stop the output of the calibrator. Now the calibrator instances on the Pandora's box is also close, uh, closing. Calibrator is still uh, running, unseen in the background, doesn't do anything, but it can be up and running. But now it's time um, to run Pandora's box manager and do the import of the files. Did you say export done? Export is done. I haven't finished my coffee yet. <laughs> well, sorry that it goes so fast. Um, uh, <laughs> We see that as a feature, but um, as I said, I cheated. I just calibrated three projectors, so it took a bit less time. All right. So now we can. We have some files here. Let me quickly sort things out. Um, uh, sorry for messing up your desktop. Oh no, it's all <laughs> fine. You have to use it, right? So we have some export files here from the Viosa software. Um, this is mainly a X file with all the information, um, how the warp is set up, and also the texture information, which part of the texture um, to present. Um, speaking of texture, let me show you what texture we are using there. So we are provided uh, 4096 by 4096 dome master file. So that's the content, how it is produced for this project here. Uh, and this is um, provided by the content creator. So we use a test pattern here. Um, so you also have a nice test pattern generator, I found out. Exactly, yeah. That's really nice to know. So a very useful tool there. Um, and this is one out of that uh, test pattern generator, or it's a fixed? That's a fixed test pattern, test which pattern you can download from the domes. test pattern generator, um, because domes are generic, not like a panorama. Yeah. And they, they go up to 8K by 8K in mm -hmm. different kinds. So yeah, simply use them. It's public domain. Yeah. So what the X files are doing, the X files are not only doing the uh, correction of, of, the, um, of the geometrics, but also uh, picking out the correct part of the texture, right? So all the cameras actually um, are provided the same um, the same image, and this is the full texture of the full dome file. So 4K by 4K um, master file, and all the cameras are looking at the same thing. So let me quickly show you the setup in Pandora's box. Uh, we have actually in the device tree, the manager, that not, that's not very interesting. And we have the quad server and the octo server. So four outputs and eight outputs here. Um, we prepared that already. So as you can see, if I go switch to full screen, both applications. So the test, the actual test file, and uh, the warps, if you switch the camera on and have a look in there, it's very bright. There you can see it a bit. So that's actually the Panoras box output. So I can show you that by just jumping around to a different um, mapping there. And there is a little box still, uh, which I will surely put on our list. So for the um blend files so let me quickly use that workaround to make it look properly so that's our actual um calibration from Vioso. how to do that as you can see here that's the folder where all the files uh, are copied into from emmanuel and this folder <clears throat> It's part of our um, project folder, so I can use it from here and just uh, drag it uh, into my project. And then I have all these files available and I can drop these files on the output. So let me select this output. This is the place where the object file, the X file, has to go um, to make the warp and the texture. Um, part correctly 
And this is the part where the blend file goes into. So this bitmap blend file to there, the X file to there. Then you get, of course, active parameters. That's something I don't want to speak about today. Um, and yeah, save those files onto the outputs. I did that as recommended in different webinars already on a different timeline, on a different sequence than my show sequence, so that I have um, different setups with calibration. I, well, that's, I forgot to do that, to switch off the blend files. So you can, if you shift the, the blend files a bit later, so you can jump in between with blend, without blend, so very quick to adjust maybe projectors or whatever you have to do on site. All right, so after adding those files and sorting them out, uh, what I did here is uh, I named the outputs as the files which are coming in. So the, the files from Viosa are all labeled, display one, two, up to 12. And the order is always, so we had a little issues. You maybe, you heard about our issues here. So we had to switch things around. And the nice thing was that the Panoras Box project, I, we were able to leave that like it was, even by switching all the outputs to different things. And that's because the uh, position of the output has not changed, and the Vioso calibration um, software is um, is providing these names always to the same uh, position, and that's why the Pandora's box um, project is still working so well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there was no issue on that side, so we had to find all the displays again. If you do it the first time, you have of course to find out which um, which display is where. But with the mosaic setup and dedicated output settings, uh, it follows a, a really good pattern there, as you can see. So I have the quad server, and this is provided display one, two, three, four, and uh, the octo server also following that exact rule. So it's something with the uh, real outputs and connections there. So both uh, applications are using that in the same way, and that's mm -hmm. working very well. So you, you find the logic in both applications always the same. If you have a certain setup, one by four, uh, two by four, for example, then there's top left, top right. And, and once you have uh, spotted that pattern, the same pattern applies in the Pandora's box manager as well. That, that makes, makes it easy to yeah. comparable, easy to get even a complex setup with 12 projectors done. Yeah, both applications rely on the NVIDIA's mosaic settings on the yeah. same client, right? Yeah. So that's the reason. All right, um, so we have the object files, we have the blend maps, um, and you know where to put them. And you can see the final, um, the final thing on the dome, and it's looking pretty well. So uh, I even can try to rotate things here, and oh, well, I have to choose both of both layers, sorry. No, sorry. There we go, and now rotate. So the whole thing is rotating now. Um, there are a few things I have to mention to make uh, this workflow that way you are looking at it. So there are some configurations and settings we have to do to achieve that result. The first thing that is that the um, the uh, X files, the object files, are correctly in, in the correct size. You have to set the unit management. You can find it in configuration, unit management, there. Um, so we are, we have the project is is on a on a pixel workflow. So I didn't change to um, to uh, to three uh, three D uh, units, but I left it in the pixel workflow to be able to use the pixel workflow. In this case, I have to care about this factor very much. So this is important for that, very important that the object files, the X files have the correct size. Um, so I have to init it with the resolution of the outputs that I'm using. All are the same. So there's no difference there. 
and if I switch, um, I, I, I can use the, the init with the resolution button. This gives me a pop-up and in this pop-up, I can choose every connected um, source of my project to uh, calculate this uh, factor to match thousand uh, pixels to, uh, to a generic unit in our 3D space. Actually, I use that resolution because that's the resolution of the projectors. And that's also the resolution we set on the output. You can, um, you can check this by going for the render engine and check the quad server. This is set up by four subdivisions, of course, because of the mosaic mode. Uh, and each um, output has a resolution of 1280 by uh, 800. Same applies, of course, for the Octo server, uh, but it's, of course, eight outputs there, right? Also, we use the two by four uh, mode to have the most compact uh, mosaic setup, which is the most performant one. Uh, so, yeah, so for both applications, that's the best way to use that output. That was the one important thing. So the other important thing is, uh, as I showed you earlier, um, all the cameras, I'm sorry, let's switch back to all cameras, please, thanks. All cameras are using the full texture provided and the object files are picking the correct part of the texture. That means, all the outputs have to be provided the full texture, which is 4K by 4K. So therefore, you have to select the camera and then you find in the inspector uh, bottom left part of the screen, I make it a bit bigger, you find some settings which are very important. First thing is the aspect ratio. And the aspect ratio has to be one by one or 10 by 10. In this case, that is not ma uh, making any difference there. Uh, this is a one by one um, aspect. Same size of, so it's a uh, quadratic uh, lookup. So I uncheck this checkbox because uh, the output aspect is uh, 16 by nine, I think, 1200, 16 by 10. By 10? Okay, 16 by 10. I'm not using that because my original texture is a one-by-one one aspect. That's the first thing to make the um, <clears throat> camera able to have a different aspect than the output. And the second thing there, <clears throat> also very important, is the texture which the camera look in Pandora's box provides to the output path. By default, this is set to the output, so this, this is 1200 by 800, and this is the texture provided to the output. So by default, the aspect is this one by one, and this will then be pressed to the 1200 by 800 thing, the full texture though, so I have the full texture information, but the resolution is shrinked down very much. And then the object file says, I, have, I want to have this part of uh, the texture and this is looking awful on the screen then because the, re the resolution is small and then you just take a small part out of it which is yeah very pixely so yeah if you don't do that maybe I can show that I don't know which projector that is actually three, display three. three you can try and display three yes that's it if I set that camera three back to the output viewport size 1200 then you can uh, maybe you can zoom in there uh, so the straight lines you can see maybe can you put a big picture on the screen oh yeah you can see it very well there i think so that's the 1200 uh on the, uh yeah go a bit to the right please yeah, I think that line is very, yeah, cool. So, and if I switch back now to um, to the full texture, 
4K by 4K, then this will change. You will see that it picks the resolution out of, oh, that's a dotted line, yeah. Now you can really see it much better. Thanks. All right, so these two points, uh, if you use these two points, um, then you uh, you have a very nice um, final um, thing to look at. And yeah, everything else you can use Panos Box, how, uh, how you use it always. So I switched to uh, turn out the test pattern. There are different test patterns available, so that's for the um, for the blend files and things, uh, turn that off and switch back to the show sequence. And I can show you a little video there, uh, of course. So we have some dome contents there. Thank you <laughs> for providing these two. Um, yeah. So nice and smooth. One other thing because before we go into the question and answer session. Um, I made this folder, the, um, the Vioso calibration folder, I made this to, uh, to be a watch folder. And by doing that, uh, as long as uh, Emmanuel is not changing the name of the uh, X uh, files and the blend files and just replacing them by another recalibration, for example, um, we are able to, um, to just replace these. Just have to be careful. You have to, to leave the files from the playback. So uh, if files are blocked from Windows, they, you cannot replace them. And that's an issue, of course. But if you leave the, um, the setup here and jump out of the setup, you're good to replace those files. You can do so. Yeah, you can do so. Um, you can look at the bottom left corner. You can see some um, some updates there. If... And here we go. Takes a while to initiate. And yeah. then we should see that something is going to change. And now updates are coming in. So that's particularly important because auto calibration is often used to make systems auto maintaining. So with fixed installed cameras and let's say a weekly schedule to realign a screen in an entrance uh, of a showroom or in a museum. And therefore a, a fixed setup that can be replaced dynamically without having operator, um, without needing an operator that is important for that. And yeah. by that uh, mechanism, this is achieved. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I, now I can jump back into my uh, uh, setup here and the playback is back. Also, the, the test patterns are back. Um, so everything fine there. Actually, a little issue there with the blend files. So we will fix that for sure. Um, if you put it in, it's not recognized directly. You have to uh, click it on and off again, the warped mode here, and then it's reapplied back. That's actually a little bug in our software. Sorry for that. We will fix that for sure. That's it for now, I think. That's the, whole the, the main things. So very easy and quick setup. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. yeah, let's have a look at uh, some questions from your side. Well, maybe we can put a, a bit of emphasis on where are resources, so where to find more information about it. Sure. Um, so um, let's just uh, have a look at it. Um, we have, so there we go. Um, anything you need to know about how to operate a calibration, which uh, software is available, how to operate it, you find in our help desk, helpdeskbioso.com. It is open to everyone. And you can download software for evaluation. In this case, uh, you want to evaluate, you also integrate, you can test that. Um, you can use our support during testing. So uh, it's not that you need to, uh, that you need to uh, apply or do something. We want you to, to know how it works before you, before you decide to use it. So this is uh, our commitment to, to you as a skilled operator. And therefore, support.vioso.com opens support files or you simply write at support.vioso.com. 
So um, it's a big invi invitation. Try it, use it, use all the uh, help that is available and um, make your steps using auto calibration and Pandora's box. Yeah, cool. Same more or less applies for us, of course. Uh, you can find the links in the chat in the GoToWebinar tool uh, soon. <laughs> so you can click them, of course. Um, you know, email addressing, support email address. You can phone us. You can um, go through the forum file. Thanks. Um, yeah, and of course, you will find this webinar on our YouTube channel, as all the other ones, too. Uh, to uh, have a look back into it if you want to see it again. Yeah, and thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And yeah, let's go through a question and answer session. So we have a little laptop here so we can read mm -hmm. your questions. So the, it's the chat. It's a chat. Oh, we forgot uh, because of time issues. Can you please provide the organize, uh, organizer rights for Emmanuel? You know how? No, I, I'm coming <laughs> over. Sorry, uh, short delay. So now we should be able to see your questions here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Right. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, one question is um, I see. Ah, this oh, one you works. have to read it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. It's, it's a little bit small. Um, so, uh, first question is if that uh, works with older versions of Pandora's box. So, um, is there any limitation where you would say we need at least version XYZ to operate that mode of DirectX and blend file? Yes, you will need version 4, I think. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are at 6, uh, so the version I'm using is 6.4.2. Mm -hmm. uh, so this workflow will uh, is available for a long time now. Okay, yeah. That's also our um, um, experience. The first time operators were using X files is date three years back or something like that. Three? Yeah. Could be. Uh, it's more like, I think, 15 or something 15. like that. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not so much aware about the versions, but good, <laughs> good to know that your version 5.1 and 6 is supported. Um, so, uh, just give me a moment. Mm -hmm. I need to get used to that tool as well. So all cameras in Pandora's box are at the same place and use the same field of view. Exactly. This is what I understand, which makes this workflow a bit special. Um, every projector or every display looks exactly at the whole content and you don't take care about its, its um, location in real world because that is what the auto calibration replaces. Yeah. So, sorry, go on. I don't want to interrupt you if Fine, you I'm want not. to go. Okay. <laughs> So that's what I explained uh, already uh, earlier. So uh, the X for the object files from Yozo, they have the information with them, which part of the texture they have to use. And that's the reason why you have to provide the full texture to all these X files, right? And I will provide another webinar. I think it's next Friday. Please. Or what's the date? Sorry? 17th? 17th, yeah. Okay, the 17th of June. Right about. Let's see. Uh, we will provide that information for sure. I will go through these things a little bit more detailed at that point. Um, for now, it's uh, um, it's important to know that for this workflow, this is not a general workflow. So there are different possibilities and different workflows possible. So there's mainly 2D, 3D workflow that's completely different. But also for the 2D workflow, um, if you're working with splits, the workflow is different. So, but I think the time for today is not enough to go through that too. So that's maybe, mm -hmm. 
whatever the, the reaction of your side is, uh, how many questions we get on that, we will provide also that information, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. this is a different workflow, but for this dome setup, actually, <clears throat> which you can run by one uh, file, this is the workflow. If you have to split files, the workflow will be different. Bit. Thank you. Um, greetings to Switzerland. Jonas said that uh, our mouse cursors were not visible. So um, if you review the webinar, maybe it might be a bit difficult to spot. And um, at least from mm -hmm. our side, we will do our best to make a transcript. So simply to, to make a tutorial, again, pointing out where to click, which, um, which option to choose um, that accompanies the video. Um, so the, yeah, <coughs> next time we need to check the mouse pointer visibility. Um, another very important question is, um, um, as you have heard or learned, that um, the calibration also takes care about the color matching and brightness adjustments of projectors. Um, so um, we didn't cover that, but yes, um, this matching is also transferred to Pandora's box. Um, so the blend files have the information about the color de degradation and the brightness adjustment, um, which we... Which we Luckily, tested yesterday, so we can assure that this is working. This is uh, the part, the uh, part uh, blend map. So we're in the very middle of the screen, you can see that. Unfortunately, you cannot see my mouse. But so I, yeah, I can blink a bit with the warp checkbox so and turn it on and off. So there, you can see also in the camera. Yeah, now it's not visible there with the white testing pattern. Uh, but this is the place where this file has to go to yeah. and. It can it calibrates the blend uh, areas and the color correction color. if you use it yes. that way. Yes. So in the workflow on Pandora box side, nothing changes. It's simply that this information that is gathered during the calibration is transported. So in fact, this is already a pretty nice uh, file format to exchange. There's not that much missing. There might be some more ideas in the future, black level compensation, but uh, not for today. So um, another question is, if uh, does we also have an API so that you can connect it with Widget Designer or even with other show control applications like external and stuff? Answer, yes. Um, the clients can be um, handled via TCP, IP, or UDP. Again, I can uh, redirect you to our help desk. It has an extensive documentation, which kinds of commands are available. But the most typical is um, make a recalibration based on a button click on a widget designer surface or by schedule. So everything that you can control via TCP IP uh, will work instantly with the Vioso API, or we, we call it remote control. API is something more. If, for example, Kulux decides, uh, Christy decides to implement a calibration directly, then <laughs> there's even a deeper um, API. Just because you will read the word, uh, the term API in our documentation, um, that's something different remote control is the keyword. Um, I will make sure that this is mentioned in a tutorial that we bring uh, up to, uh, in terms of Pandora's box. Cool. Yeah, and it's, this is mm -hmm. uh, also uh, important for the workflow. You have to leave the, um, the playback of the X files. So leave the setup thing to make it uh, possible to, um, yes, um, to override them. Right? Ex exactly. The Windows yes. thing. So the the widget question is a really nice one. I like that. Yes, it's possible. Yeah. And uh, that workflow is then automating the whole thing completely. Yeah. Well, I think uh, the, what we would need to keep in mind is, let's say you have you have a widget designer and you want to automate both programs, then you would have a sequence mm -hmm. like stop output of Pandora's box, make a recalibration, do the export. Close the calibration output, go back, fire up a, let's say, testing pattern and say, yes, it's good or bad, or even skip that step. Um, and this is all simply doing firing UDP or TCP command somewhere in the network. Um, and it's only the calibration software really they need to address. So everything is then transparent handled, however you put the Pandora's box layout. So this is in a, working in a similar mindset as the Pandora's box manager. So mm -hmm. you do not touch the client, you touch just the manager. So I think that should easily fits in. Cool. Yeah. 
So another question is if we can have six projectors with one Pandora's box output. In fact, yes, because that's what we're doing right now with a Octo server. And um, by using Mosaic, um, these outputs are combined, not just because, um, uh, mainly because of uh, increased performance. In terms of calibration, it doesn't matter if it's a Mosaic or not Mosaic, um, but uh, with uh, this kind of setup, we have even up to eight from a single machine running perfectly in sync and even mixing, let's say, a quad head and an eight head nicely fits together. So I think you can live in a in the world of Pandora's box very flexible. Yes, sure. Uh, even if you would extend with, don't know if that is supported, but if you have data path fx force or other kind of extenders or using mat uh, matrices or event masters and all this kind of, oh, sorry, spider. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's from, from at least from point of the calibration, as long as you can directly access one projector at a time, it is supported. Yes, and from our side, uh, we have our own how I provides up to eight outputs, um, not eight times 4K though. Uh, so that's uh, the maximum there is uh, full HD. So 1920 by 1080 times eight. Um, and the uh, mosaic setup is um, you have to use it uh, if you go if you output more than five uh, more than four outputs mm -hmm. so if you extend over a quad you have you have to use the mosaic workflow uh, to make it uh, work mm -hmm. thank you now a question i would also like to ask maybe it's silly but if but if i ask it it's, uh, it's easy uh, no, silly i mean if i ask it that way now we have put um, x files so object files into the uh, system can we edit these files is there sure. a possibility to warp in, dive in and yeah, you know, change? Um, That's great. So you can, um, I can do it. I think we are going gone through. So if I destroy something, uh, it's maybe not too bad. I can go for uh, these uh, X files and I can say, uh, create ed editable mesh from mesh. So, and with this option, um, I can, uh, now use this uh, mesh file, this Panoras box mesh file, instead of the X file from Bioso. Uh, and this is distorted in the same way. So I, if I put that in there, um, it's not changing something on the screen yet, but now I can go for um, the warping tool in Panoras box uh, and warp that um, and, and manually adjust that file. Um, let's go, this is display one. Well, that, that's awesome because um, uh, as nice as an automatic calibration is, if you really need to do some very last minute changes without leaving a running setup, obviously we have a, uh, a very good way ah. within Pandora's box to, uh, it's, <laughs> can't see it. <laughs> uh, I can assure you it's, it's really working and you do not need to okay, you can box. maybe you can put on uh, the the camera on your screen yeah and then we can show your desktop and then people can see that yeah and um, that's not so bad idea because so far you did not have any view on the whole dome um and now i destroyed it now you destroyed <laughs> it yes but, um, but i can go back to your x file yes it can so go. uh anytime uh i can do that uh so it will be back okay so this so in fact, that that is what the fish eye camera, uh, what the fish eye camera is is actually um, filming. And here you see uh, this this moving grid. This is uh, now um, Thomas doing doing the warp in yes. Pandora's box. And and really that that's very helpful. It, it happens that shortly because an event starts, something yes. has changed, and this is at least a predictive way to make something fit that's not fitting unless uh, you do the recalibration. That, that's really good. Good question. Thank you for asking. I, I wanted yeah. to ask you that, by the way, cool. all the time. Thank you. So I, uh, I kicked back in the X file, so, mm -hmm. and then, yeah. So there, it goes, nice goes back again. again. Very well. That's cool. Good. Thanks for that question. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
So I question uh, that I am, I'm hooking up with the a question that has come in. If if you only want to fix one projector, do you need to run all the calibration to all twelve projectors? One question, uh, one uh, to some extent is answered. If you put it, um, if you uh, rearrange it manually, um, you can do just. Of course, you handle just a single projector. If one projector is off and you just do not want to hassle with the camera, you simply make it in Pandora's box. If you go the other way, and if the camera has not moved, that's the key. If the camera is still in place, you can simply scan a single projector and calculate it back into the existing compound of the other 12 projectors. And again, the key is that the camera has not moved. Um, Assuming that this, uh, if it's a fixed setup with fixed mounted cameras, this is the standard way, of course. So the uh, question is uh, answered that way. In a real way, you can just scan one if you have the camera um, still in position. And otherwise, uh, without leaving Pandora's box, you can do manually adjustments there. And uh, also a good question is, what happens with the camera after a job is done? Does this camera need to be there? It does not. The camera is just required during the scan. So during you see these white patterns and the dots. Um, as soon as you're happy with the result and do not plan to redo it, the camera can be removed, disconnected. Um, even adjustments on uh, manual adjustments on brightness, color matching that do not require the camera can be done. So the camera is just an ad hoc um, tool and definitely is not required by Pandora's box. Actually, Pandora's Box doesn't know nothing about the existence of this camera. So, thank you for these very good questions. Um, they brought up quite good lights on it. Um, so far, these are the questions that are in the list. And it should, cool. I also can't see something new. So, if there's something in your head, now is a good time to put it in. Yeah, anytime is a good time to put questions yeah. in. So, we provided you the links already. So feel free to contact uh, the Kulux, uh, the Chrissy support. I'm not, yeah, this is uh, because there's uh, still the Kulux word written. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, so support.pandorasbox at Chrissy Digital. That's our email address, the direct email support. And yeah, feel free to um, browse our forums. Feel free to contact the Vioso company. Um, the links are provided in the chat. Uh, yeah, thank mm -hmm. you for watching. And yeah, hope to see you soon again. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you to for be our host. And thank you for being our guest, taking the long journey to us. That was really a pleasure. I, I learned something very important today. And yeah. there were quite a lot of questions towards us how to deal with Kulux and Pandora's box. And now I'm feeling much, much more comfortable. And just to get the last question done, um, oh. Kema. Any questions you have about specific cameras, directly contact us. Um, we can find out if that camera that you are thinking about is working or not. It's exactly what I meant. Use our support to qualify um, if, if it will work in, in the mindset that you have or not. So um, it's not just our cameras working, but camera is a big and huge topic. So this is our support for you in pre-sales condition to go through that. Thank you again. Let's see how we meet again. Um, yeah. which there will be much more possibilities, Poss 3D calibration, auto mapping, <laughs> back level again. Yeah, we'll so, see. Um, if you like us to do that uh, once again. Yeah, give us feedback. Give us feedback and we are more happy to do so. Thank you cool. also to Christy to open up to us this yeah. way. It's also not so, um, uh, it also could be a different way. Yeah, Thank you welcome. so much. Thanks for watching. And Thanks greetings for watching. from Düsseldorf. Stay healthy. Oh, yeah. See you next time. Bye-bye.